Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. Yes, it's been a while since I've done a movie review. Just very busy uh, a lot lately. Yeah, I've continued to post some more commercial breaks and all, but you get the idea. Anyway, since June is going to come to an end, it's graduation month as well as Pride Month, and we're getting ready for July, which will be Independence Day, I decided to review a teen romantic comedy simply called can't hardly wait. Yes. Essentially, it's a story about a post-graduation party. You know, all the high school students have graduated and they're just getting ready to have a wild, crazy, crass party, you know, filled with many stereotypes of any kind, you know, like jocks, geeks, prom queens, misfits, outsiders, um, musical bands, um, stoners, any other kind of uh, personality that they have between those characters. You know, boy and girl. <laughs> so they're just having fun, you know, drinking, eating, you know, making a mess of themselves, you know, doing a lot of crazy stuff. I mean, this is exactly what we expect from a comedy like this. So this was in the tradition of of all the teen comedies uh, from the past, uh, mostly the ones from the 80s like you know, Porky's, uh, as well as uh, Fast Times of Richmond High, Revenge of the Nerds, uh, the Screwball movies, <laughs> or or any other teen comedies out there like uh, The Breakfast Club, uh, uh, Sixteen Candles, uh, Pretty Pink, I mean, all, you know, those types of movies. And like those movies, I mean, yes, parties are the central, the best part of the films alone, but also they even have their own conflicts with poignancies and real people or some of them are caricatures or whatever that you choose. So you want to get to know them as far as this we're concerned. This is, of course, the 20-year um, reunion edition that Mill Creek had put out, which actually uses the movie poster, which looks so much better than all the previous releases we've seen. Um, but it's generally a reissue of the 2008 Sony Blu-ray release, which they also put it on DVD as well, um, which is out of print, but I think you can still get it for a little more. I actually got this for $8.99 at Amazon, so it was a great deal. I couldn't make up my mind which edition should I pick up. The one from Sony, which has a very uh, very high sharp transfer, but it's also you know kind of rough on the edges too. So it's deceptive, or this release that uh, actually looks a lot better than ever. I mean, they only put this on BD-25, while the Sony release was BD-50. But, but at least this one has a slip cover to join. And, yeah, and you can see it on the spine. Or, yeah. <laughs> and you can see the back. And it lists all the features. And you can see all the screenshots and all. Of all the familiar cast, too. I mean, I mean the main actors, of course, you got Ethan Embry also known as Ethan Rando, you got Charlie Cosmo, and Lauren Ambrose, uh, Peter Vicinelli, uh, Seth Green, who's always been the best, and, and of course, the lovely Jennifer Love Hewitt. <laughs> Great cast. Uh, so yeah, it does have uh, two commentaries uh, that features the cast and the filmmakers themselves, uh, which is Deborah Kaplan and Harry uh, Elfont. They have the Huntington Hill Class of 98 uh, reunion special, uh, the making of the teen class featurette, the life of the party featurette, and some deleted scenes, and also the music video uh, by Smash Mouth, I Can't Get Enough of You Baby. You know that song. I can't get enough of you baby. I can't get enough of you baby. Yes, it's true. 
baby, yes, it's true. <laughs> yeah, you know that song. Um, so, yeah, you got a lot of um, incredible actors joining in, too, some of which are soon to be famous. I mean, you actually got uh, Jason Segel as uh, the watermelon guy. Um, you got um, you got Jamie Presley as one of uh, the girlfriends of of Jennifer Love Hewitt's character. Um, you also got Donald Fias on as uh, one of the uh, band members too of the Love Burger type, which I know is joined in by uh, Breck and Meyer. And I know he went on to do the TV show uh, Scrubs. <laughs> but you also have some other familiar actors too. I mean, you got Jenna Elfman uh, from Dharma and Greg. I mean, you got Melissa Joan Hart you know, from Clarissa Explains It All. And uh, Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Uh, you got uh, Jerry O'Connor from Stand By Me and Sliders. Uh, pretty much got uh, everyone in the movie that they really are familiar with. So. <laughs> so, yeah. But the centerpiece of the story, though, was that yes, it does focus on for this particular night. It deals with romance, revenge, and most of all, rock and roll. <laughs> and it also involves sex, too. So, I mean, this is like one rowdy uh, graduation party after another. Uh, the transfer, again, for this Blu-ray is a lot better than the Sony release. I mean, it's still 35 millimeter print, though. Uh, well, anyway, let, let's begin. Uh, the movie stars Ethan Embry. You may remember him from films like Dutch, All I Want for Christmas, A Far Off Place, and, of course, um, Empire Records. And that thing you do, among others. Uh, Jennifer Love Hewitt, uh, best known for the TV series uh, Party of Five. Uh, she was actually in one of her earlier roles in the TV show Kids Incorporated, uh, that was on Disney Channel. Uh, she was even in a short lived series uh, with Matt Fewer called uh, Shaky Ground. Yeah. And she was actually in a movie called uh, Munchies, I think. I think it was one of the sequels. And um, as well as uh, I Know What You Did Last Summer, along with the sequel. And went on to do uh, the TV show, well, it was a short-lived series called Time of Your Life. But then she did uh, the, the Ghost Whisperer. And I guess for a little bit, she was in Criminal Minds. Uh, Lauren Ambrose, uh, you may remember her from the movie In and Out uh, with Kevin Klein. Uh, I know she's done some other stuff too, like she's done Broadways, and she's a singer herself too. Uh, very beautiful. Uh, Peter uh, Fincinelli, uh, I know he later went on to do the TV show Fast Lane, a very short lived series from Fox. And then, yeah, he went on to do the Twilight movies, playing uh, Carissa Colon. <laughs> Go figure. Uh, Seth Green, as you may already know, I mean, he's he's been in a lot of stuff. I mean, of course, already, you know, doing Adult Swim's uh, Robot Chicken, you know, as well as, you know, focusing on the Star Wars and DC comic specials. And that. I mean, he's done, you know, movies like the Austin Powers, um, he's been in the movie Old Dogs, uh, he's done like a lot of earlier stuff in the 80s, you know, like yeah, he was in an episode of Tales from the Dark Side, a yeah, Monster in the Closet episode, uh, the Woody Allen film Radio Days, he was in uh, My Stepmother's an Alien, of course Rat Race, uh, that came out in 2001. Uh, Joe's seen the Pussycats, which I know it's from the same directors who did this. Uh, I mean, he's everywhere. I mean, he's an awesome actor. 
And I, I know he's been in a movie with Macaulay Culkin called Party Monster. I think they were both in another film together, too, but I can't seem to remember what movie it is. Uh, anyway, uh, Charlie Cosmo, uh, Char uh, Charlie Cosmo, uh, for those who don't know, he was in the movie uh, Dick Tracy. Uh, he was also in the movie uh, What About Bob? Yeah, that was a very funny comedy. And Hook. So he went on to <laughs> to do other stuff um, even before um, Ken Harley Wade and maybe even after. <laughs> yeah, but he, he's great. Uh, Robert Jane, uh, Michelle uh, Bookhurts. I think she's done other stuff. I don't know what movies she's been in. Uh, Joe uh, Michael Alley, Jay Paulson, Chris Owen, Jason Segel, of course. Went on to do the TV series that was short-lived called Freaks and Geeks. But then went on to do um, the TV show How I Met Your Mother. I know he was he's always been working with Judd Apatow with films like uh, Forgetting Sarah Marshall. Uh, and he's been in other comedies too. Uh, Leah Duvall. Yeah, which she went on to do other movies, uh, some are teen movies or other ones, like She's All That, The uh, Faculty, uh, But I Am a Cheerleader, uh, 21, as well as 21 Grams, uh, The Grudge, and Zodiac. <laughs> uh, Jamie Presley, yes, I know she went on to do a lot of stuff. Um, well, she was in the, the TV show uh, Mortal Kombat Conquest, and she was I even in this uh, movie based on a video game, too, called Dead or Alive, but most of all, she was in the TV show My Name is Earl, uh, which she won a Primetime Emmy Award for her role as Joy Turner, and then I know she also went on to do uh, other films like Rainmaster with uh, you guessed it, Jerry Springer. Terrible film, but well, at least she's the best part of this awful movie. Uh, among many others, she's done. Uh, Tamala Jones, uh, which I know she went on to do the film The Wood, uh, Kingdom Come, The Brothers, and What Man Wants. Uh, she was even in the movie called Booty Call, but. She, she was actually in a short-lived series called Veronica's Closet with Percy Alley, Jennifer Lyons, uh, Shannon Roll, Sean Patrick Thomas. I, I know he, he went on to do the film Save the Last Dance uh, and the Barbershop movies. Yeah. Freddie Rodriguez, um, who went on to do the TV series uh, Six Feet Under from HBO. He was also in the movie Planet Terror. Uh, from Robert Rodriguez, uh, part of uh, Grindhouse. It's great to see him in this one. Uh, Eric uh, Palladino, who was in the TV show ER. Dono Faison, yes, who was in the TV show Clueless and later Scrubs. Uh, Paige Moss, uh, Eric uh, Beforo, Selma Blair, yes, Selma Blair. We went on to do Hellboy and um, other stuff too. Uh, Jennifer Pies, ah, I can't say it. Uh, I know she went on to do some voice acting for Steven Universe that's on Cartoon Network. Uh, Sarah Rule, which I know she was in a show called Less Than Perfect from ABC. Uh, she was also in a show called Popular. Um, and I, I know she was doing those uh, Jennifer. Uh, Jenny Craig commercials uh, you know, at the time too. I mean, in the, the late 2000s, early 2010s. Uh, Nicole Waterback. Um, um, I know she was in Bring It On, uh, as well as Dark Angel, and she was even in Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Uh, Leslie Grossman from What I Like About You, the Amanda Bynes uh, sitcom. Uh, Marissa Nichols um, went on to do 24. <laughs> and then, of course, Riverdale, that's on CW. 
and Vicious uh, Rayon Shannon uh, went on to do the film The Hurricane, the film with uh, Denzel Washington, also 24. Um, and then, of course, you have all the uncredited appearances, yeah, because their names are not on the credits. Uh, you got Jenna Elfman from Darmer and Gray, you got Jerry O'Connor from Stand By Me, as well as Sliders. Uh, Marissa Joan Hart from Clarissa Explains It All, as well as Sabrina the Teenage Witch, and Melissa and Joey. Rebecca Meyer, which you may remember him from Road Trip along with Clueless, and Rat Race, and yes, the Garfield movies. But also had work uh, together with Seth Green and, and Robot Chicken. Also to note that uh, Brecken Meyer was once uh, married to the director, uh, Deborah Kaplan. Uh, since 2001, you know, they had two kids until they got separated and divorced in 2012. Yeah, shame. Uh, Amber Belson. Yes, from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And Jennifer Elise Cox uh, from the two Brady Bunch movies. <laughs> yeah, portrayed as Jam Brady. It's written and directed by Deborah Kaplan and Harry Alphonse. The movie begins set on graduation day at a suburban high school at somewhere in California called Huntington Hillside where the senior year of teenagers are getting ready for the future ahead of them for college. But they're being attended at a graduation party through a large house uh, that's run by a rich class member Molly Stinson, played by Michelle Bookhurt's uh, family. Uh, among these characters are an outsider named Preston Myers, the main character of the story, played by uh, Ethan Embry, who's an aspiring writer and plans to proclaim his love of his life of a four-year secret crush of the most popular girl as well as senior class prom queen and cheerleader in school named Amanda Beckett, played by Jennifer Love Hewitt, who's just been recently dumped by her popular jock boyfriend and football hero named Mike Dexter, played by Peter Fascinelli. Uh, of course, they all have their best friends, too, to join the lawn for the ride. Um, Mike actually has uh, three jockey friends, uh, Jake, Ben, and TJ, all played by Chana Rowe, Sean Patrick Thomas, and Freddy Rodriguez, um, which they decided to create their game plan to actually dump their all their girlfriends, um, which, along with Amanda, we got Beth, Cindy, and Rachel, all played by Jamie Presley, Tamala Jones, and Jennifer Lyons. But unfortunately, Jake, Ben, and TJ wants to be with them for a while because they've just been invited to a concert until they're ready to break them up. But, well, that's what they think they were doing. Meanwhile, we meet a nerd classmate, uh, William Lichter, played by Charlie Parsmo who's planning on revenge on Mike for his relentless bullying. And he's joining in with his best friends, uh, who are known as the X-Files. Uh, Jeff uh, Pettersorelli and Murphy Pellin, both played by Joe uh, Michelelli and Jay Paulson. So, they, they come up with a perfect plan where they're just going to go around uh, trapping Mike along with their friends, I think but most likely Mike, where they're going to actually uh, put chloroform and, and just trap them and, you know, and tie them all up in embarrassment. Yeah. But I know that's, that's another story. <laughs> uh, but let's get back to Preston. He has an antisocial best friend, Denise Fleming, played by Lauren Ambrose, who has no intention to go to the party because she wants to do whatever she wants in her life. That's mostly because, you know, she'd rather be, you know, be more human than what than meets the eye here. But she wants to be dragged in along with Preston anyway. 
mostly so Preston will have a chance to send out a love letter that he wrote because he's an aspiration writer. They basically share some infamacy because they both actually love strawberry pop tarts. So, there you go. I mean, that's basically the typical of, of, of the love life here. Then we meet um, Kenny Fisher, who was nicknamed Special K, not the cereal. <laughs> he was played by Seth Green. He was just a, a wannabe thug. I mean, using his ebonautics, Ebonex, uh, trying to sound more black than white. He plans on losing his virginity by the end of the night, which is going to fall in love with this uh, Asian chick because he's trying to find all these other girls of his life, um, which is known as Ready to Have Sex Girl, played by Nicole Butterback, who's joining in with um, her best friend, played by Leslie Grossman. That's why he's preparing himself, since he has goggles on and you know, trying to look cool and hip. And he also uh, brought in his uh, bug friends along the ride. And I know there's another kid who just goes around, you know, stealing and, and all at a local store, liquor store and all. Um, anyway, he, he has his entire gear. His backpack filled with tons of uh, condoms and Kama Satra, a lot of uh, colognes and stuff, so he'll be prepared for it once it goes up to the upstairs bathroom, which unfortunately got locked uh, in with the niece because she enters and now they're both stuck together. Um, well, Somehow, by accident, uh, they started talking to each other about their old friendship together and how they had drifted apart. But the conversation leads to the restoration of their friendship and escalates into having sex and, and all that. So that's really cool. Now we're going to get to Amanda, where she's being consulted by her popular girlfriends, um, but she realized she has nothing in common with. Even her own second cousin, uh, Ron, played by uh, Eric uh, Palladino, wants up hitting on her, but she tries to figure out that she actually has an identity crisis of her own, yet the poignancy that she's not so sure who she is anymore. I mean, is she Mike's girlfriend, or she's just somewhat of a, pretty much an outsider, in a way. But she then discovers um, Preston's letter that's, that somehow appears, um, even though Preston did throw it away in the trash, um, mostly because he was trying his best to, to make out with uh, Amanda, trying to get to know her. The sad part is, you know, he's, he's being in an overcrowd of guests around, also getting interrupted by this black guy you know, who talks too much. And um, then he wants to uh, drive it along to a local um, coffee shop where he was about to make a phone call to, uh, for a radio uh, DJ listener to bring some advice to a, a Barry Manilow song called Mandy because it's kind of related to, it was a short name for Amanda, but apparently they, they said that <laughs> the song is basically about a dog. <laughs> only to be uh, interrupted by an angel who's a stripper um, that's played by uh, Jenna Elfman who's just giving him advice, you know, also trying to compare this to uh, Scott Bayo from yeah, Charles in Charge, he had that TV show and all that. Before he finally, you know, be able to have the plans to actually go back to Amanda, which at this point on, Mike was ready to actually make it up for her, but just didn't work out. Amanda's already upset and apparently just called uh, Preston, uh, just berated him, called him an asshole. So, yeah, calls it quits. And then now Mike is being intoxicated after already being dumped by Amanda. Um, 
where he learns from Trip uh, McNeedy, who's a, a graduated and former stud from his high school, Olsen College, which, and he's played by, in an uncredited role, uh, Jerry O'Connor, who just gave him advice that a dime a dozen and learns how, you know, his girlfriend's going to be in the same fashion that Mike did to score other women who was pretty unsuccessful. So I guess in some ways or another, since everything had failed, he decided to wind up being friends and just to make up all the, the mistakes he did uh, with uh, <laughs> uh, William. Which unfortunately, even for his uh, plan to get revenge on Mike, um, he wants up going into the party to drive Mike out. But once he was inside the party, uh, he begins drinking alcohol to fit in, you know, like beer and, and all, forgetting the reason why he got there in the first place. So he wants up doing an, an improv to the song uh, Paradise City by Guns N' Roses. So that's where it made him very popular. You know, the chicks really started digging him. So he was the life of the party <laughs> um, with multiple women around. And yes, they desperately wanted to have sex with him too. So. William, soon after, William begins talking with Mike, who apologized to him for bullying him all, all these years. William forgives him, and, and they want a bonding with each other, all together, which I know that's what led to the trap <laughs> that the X-Files had set it up, as William had planned. So now they're both uh, getting tied up, and, you know, they got, you know, chloroform, and they've been <laughs> just a with humiliation, you know, like they're dressing up like girls or something. <laughs> um, so, of course, um, as things have gone along, the cops came by. Um, we noticed that, yes, well, there's a lot of graffiti going around, too, some lot of uh, smoking, and, you know, people, there's even those stoners around, too, like uh, the watermelon guy played by Jason Siegel, along with this other stone guy, and a lot of crazy stuff happening. Yeah, it's it's obviously that the neighbors had called the cops, so that's where they brought in the entire team. Um, yeah, one of the cops, um, believe it or not, was actually uh, uh, one of the actors from the, the movie uh, or the TV show uh, Seinfeld, who played Poppy. And I was kind of surprised to see him in the movie, too, because he also... Uh, just uh, bail uh, William out since he was in jail. And just explain that uh, <laughs> that he actually um, Mike just took the blame for all of this, and they they both became friends. Um, by the next morning, William had seen Mike and his friends at a diner. He tries to thank Mike for taking the fall, but basically Mike just acts like an asshole that he remembers nothing that happened the previous night and ridicules him in front of his friends. And then Preston is at the railroad station about to leave to, for Boston, you know, just to have some future plans. But Amanda arrives and asks him about the letter, which Preston confesses he wrote it and was about to depart for the writing workshop of Kurt Wonnegut. Uh, the two eventually say goodbye and Preston walks away but then stops and runs back to get to share a kiss together. So now things are are going swell. So they now are together again. But then they show all the other characters' fates too was <laughs> you know, like for example, uh, Denise and Kenny went to the diner, which five minutes later they dumped themselves and then later they found a bathroom and got back together. Um, then Mike went to college, but after drinking too much, he lost his football scholarship, and so 40 pounds overweight and working at a car wash. A job he lost, <laughs> incriminating Polaroid's surface. Uh, William eventually became the most popular student at Harvard, because he formed his own computer company, made him with millions. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Well, it may not be a perfect teen comedy, but it does have a lot of great moments to, to choose from, and a lot of uh, memorable dialogues and you know, 
uh, all these one-liners that you can hear, and, and some of the characters having their scene-stealing roles, you know, like you know, Special K, for instance, or the fact that you have, like, so many groups of any kind. I mean, even have the yearbook girl, you know, who was played by Marissa John Hart, you know, Vicky, who's, who just wants to have all of her friends sign her yearbook, but every time she tries to do that, you know, it just gets knocked over into a swimming pool or getting thrown away or any other. Or they wrote a lot of mean things. <laughs> that was like a running gag. And, and then you have um, other characters like the, the Love Burger Band, uh, which is led by uh, Walter, played by Rebecca Meyer, uh, joining in with the drummer Dan, played by Donald Faison, along with the others. And you get like the the stone girl, the crying drunk girl, all these other uh, crazy characters around that you can choose from. That pretty much takes uh, the supporting the roles out of the uh, the main cast as, as they're followed here. Um, of course, I'm always into the um, the outcast uh, territory here, you know, with Ethan Embry's character uh, Preston, because he's great in the movie. Even when he was trying to, you know, make love with the popular girl in class, you know, Jared for Love Hewitt, his character uh, Amanda. Which, I, I do wish there were more scenes with them, which I know it's, at times, it didn't quite click because of the fact that she's being dumped by this uh, jockey boyfriend who's an asshole at times. Uh, Mike Dexter, you know, Peter Fettisinelli. But hey, he, you know, he gets his revenge coming from our nerdy classmate, uh, William, by you know, Charlie Corsmo's character. Was I know he became the life of the party, and <laughs> and he's also pretty much stealing the entire scene of the film, as opposed to uh, Kenny Fisher, played by Seth Green. I mean, of course, any movie with Seth Green, you know, he's always worth watching, whenever it's good or bad. I mean, apparently he was going to be the biggest life of the party, but but he wants to get him you know, stuck in the bathroom with with this. Uh, with Preston's uh, antisocial friend, which I know they had to make up with each other since they pretty much separated apart from childhood. And I know you get other characters too to follow, like I know the host of, of Molly Stinson, which I know she basically spends the entire running time just you know trying to trying to make this entire house neat. Yeah, but it, her, every time, you know, one of their friends keeps you know, graffitiing and, you know, actually messing up uh, her her picture on the wall with her family. And, and also, she begins to start sniffing poop around, which I know she actually vomited for real. All that stuff. And I know the film was going to be attended to, to be an R-rated comedy, so that explains why it, it had uh, a lot of teens drinking alcohol and lots of drug use and of course but they had to make it more tamer and I guess if they had tried to add some nudity in the film maybe that's kind of what it could have helped for this uh, raunchy teen comedy I mean this was before you know America Pie came along which that was the following year <laughs> yeah but I know, that's typical of Sony for doing that, but, but they wanted it that way uh, for its graduation month. Um, and by the way, for its uh, small budget, it was only $10 million um, as produced, uh, only made $25 million. It wasn't exactly a huge hit as they were expecting, but it was more like just a, a bit of a sleeper. Uh, but the soundtrack, on the other hand, um, I think it was more successful than the movie itself. I mean, aside from Smash Mouth, you get like a bunch of various um, 80s and 90s songs that you're familiar with. You know, like you got Run DMC's It's Tricky. Uh, you got uh, the title song by The Replacements called Can't Hardly Wait. Uh, Paradise City, you know, by Guns N' Roses. Uh, you got 
Link 182's uh, song "Damn It." <laughs> uh, Blessed Wives turned it up, and, and then you got all these uh, random songs. There, you got Third Eye Blind with London. You got Sublime's uh, "Caress Me Down." Even Sneaker Pimp's uh, Six Underground," which is more of a sort of a, a pal um, version of a, a mix of version. And then you got Tony Locke's Funky Cole Medina. There's like a lot of songs that they choose from. Um, but still, I mean, maybe they could have tried to pace it up a bit to uh, just to center around those characters. And I know they're trying their best, but seeing how overcrowded uh, the rest of this party is, because that's the whole point of the story. You know, I mean, I don't think there hasn't been, you know, a teen comedy where it focuses more on the, gra the the graduation party, which is only just shown like, you know, halfway through the story, while the rest is just, you know, conflicts. So at least I got to give them credit for that. I mean, this is exactly what we expect, and that's why I enjoy it. I mean, it could have been better, but hey, it's better than nothing. <laughs> so that's Can't Hardly Wait, and I give the movie uh, three and a half stars, um, just to be fair. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.